This week, parashat b'shalach. God took the Jewish people out of Egypt, and we had the ten plagues. The Jewish people went to serve God. And after three days, when the Jewish people don't come back, the messengers go back to Paro and tell him, hey, the Jews are not planning to go back. Paro is starting to run after the Jews, and he catches up to them by the sea. And this is where we're standing right here. So let's start. Source number one. The heart of Paro that yesterday told the, the Jewish people, run, go away, go away, I don't want you over here anymore. Turned over. And they said, It says, what did we do? All these millions of Jews, millions of property that we sent away. We sent the Jewish people from serving us. He harnessed his chariot, and Amol took him. He took his nation. He took six hundred bachur. He took six hundred select chariots. And all the chariots of Mitzrayim, and not the regular troops. And shalishim al kulo. And he put officers on all of them. Wow. And he led the Mitzrayim after them. The Egyptians ran after them. And he sigu them chonim al yam. They catch them as they are standing by the sea. So right there, they catch him in a place called Balzephon. And as Paro is coming near, the Jewish people are looking what's going on behind them. The Egyptians are after them. And they are caught between the Egyptians and the sea. מאוד, they were very scared. And they shouted to God, specifically Moshe did. Start praying to God, get God, you took us out of Egypt, you put us into this trouble. Help us. And here is what we're going to be concentrating on. God said to Moshe, Mati Tsakelai. Says, why are you shouting to me? Speak to Jewish people and they should travel. And now, lift your stick, your staff, upon the sea, and split it, so that the Jewish people can come on dry land, inside, into the sea. Okay, so Rashi starts to explain. He says, God asking, telling Moshe, why are you shouting to me? Why are you talking to me? Limad Nurashi says, this teaches us, Shehaya Moshe omedu mitpalel. What was Moshe doing when the Egyptians are coming? He's saying, God, do something. Amar lo akadosh baruchu, so God told him, lo et ata l'arich batfila. God told him, now is not the time for prayer. Maybe there are some times for prayer, now is not the time for prayer. What do you mean, why not now? And this is a rule that you can take for your entire life. She Israel netunim betzara. When the Jewish people are in trouble, the last thing you do is pray. That's what God teaching Moshe. Now, right? You have the same expression that I did. He says, when the Jewish people are in trouble, the last thing that you should be doing is praying. That's what Rashi says. Now let's try to understand what's going on over here. Let's look at page number two. The Rebbe says, Mesaperet ha-Torah sh'akashera mitzrim ratfu achre b'nei Yisrael when the Egyptian reign after the Jewish people ve'em ayu b'matzav sh'am lifneem the sea is in front of them paro machanao machoreem paro in his camp behind them and from all other sides in the desert the scorpions, the snakes what did Moshe do? So we already learned. Moshe prayed to God. And God told him, why are you shouting to me? And Rashi says that God told him a rule. When the Jewish people are in trouble, it's not time to pray. 
אלא, so what you should do, דבר עם בני ישראל, ואתה הרי ממנך לים. It says you should tell them, split the sea and go. That's what he tells them. And we're going to now try to understand this statement. וצריך להבין, a couple of things are not understood over here. So we're going to take it by, one by one. Number one, לשם מה צריך הקדוש ברוך הוא לומר למשה מה לא לעשות? There's a rule. By the way, every leader, every coach knows this rule. In any sport, you don't tell a player what not to do. Because all he hears is yeah, what to do. Also in the army, when you give a command, you don't give a command, do not shoot. Because the, the, the soldier is going to hear what? Shoot. You don't say do not shoot. And over here, what's not to say? Why is he telling Moshe what not to do? Instead of Moshe telling Moshe what not to do, what should he do? Tell him what to do. The whole thing doesn't make sense. It's not the way a commander gives commands, especially at a time of war. So the whole thing doesn't make sense. Why are you telling him what not to do? Tell him what to do. And who cares? So okay. Don't think about the pink elephant. The only thing you do is to think about Exactly. <laughs> so he, he says, uh, why did God need to tell Moshe what not to do? Why are you shouting at me? He should have told him immediately what to do. What, what was he supposed to do? The bear of Israel, he should speak to the Jewish people. And they should go travel. And you, you know what you should do? You should split the sea. And what is the need for the sake of you? So why does God have an introduction? That's the first question. Why does God tell Moshe what not to do? Question number one. Question number two. Yetera mizo. And this is the, the difficult question. Inyan atfilahu, prayer, has a meaning behind it. Shamitpalel mitchaber umitkasher im akadosh b'chu. The word tafel, tfilah, comes from the word connection. לטפל את חרסי את החרס, אומרים בעברית. In Arame, actually in the, in the words of the Mishnah, I'm not sure what words they use today, but when you connect two pieces of clay, it's called לטפל. Yeah? To connect, to make one, to become one. So when we pray, we become one with God. ואם כן, and if, if this is so, what can be better than Moshe praying? God, Moshe says, now is the time for me to connect to God, to tell him what's happening over here. What, what can be, what, what's so bad about it? And this is when we're talking about prayer by a simple person, like us. When somebody doesn't know how dear prayer is, we don't appreciate godliness. We never, in, in other words, God never answered us back. Moshe, when Moshe prayed, you know what happened? Not like us. God, God talked to him. He said, he, he, he came to God, God, we need this. God says, when do you need it? What time? You need it in the morning, you need it in the evening. Yeah, it was a mid connection. We can pray, maybe God listens, maybe God. You know, we don't see him listening. Maybe if you work hard on it, we would feel him. But Moshe, that's the, that's the one guy who should be praying. Hey, we need something. Yes. Well, there's a time to pray and there's a time to take action. We've learned that from other parshas. Very good. But in this case, he was stuck. He, he had the, the sea and he had Pharaoh's people coming. Very good. Very good. Exactly. That's our question. That's exactly. That's exactly our golden question. What do you want from him? Vegam kavanato batfila ena kavana bechol inyanea. Vaalachat kama vekama kavod batfilat Moshe. Over here we have Moshe, shaya rabban kol Israel. He was the rabbi of the entire Jewish people. Shemitzad atzmo ayam mad matzav shelemal minei olam legam reiv bichtiv. Over here we have Moshe, who's on the level of an angel. He's praying. We're not talking about someone like us praying. So he says, Anochi omed ben Hashem ben Achem. He's the intermediary between God and us. Shaya memutza, 
שכיבד נסרן עם הקדוש ברוך הוא. Through him, the Jewish people connected to God. הרי מובן שלא יכול להיות עניין נעלה יותר מאשר המעמד ומצב של משה רבנו ותפילתו. Obviously, there's nothing better than משה רבנו telling God what the Jewish people need. What was he saying? He wasn't praying that he wanted a new Lexus. That wasn't even, he wasn't asking for a new Lexus. What was he asking for? He was asking God, like you say, to save the Jewish people. What can be more? What can be better than that? ואף על פי כן אומר הקדוש ברוך הוא למשה, never the less God tells to משה, ובשביל זה מוסיפים כמה תיבות בתורה. And by the way, God inserted these words in the Torah specifically to tell you, משה is doing something wrong over here. And this is when God says, מה תצעק עליי? He says, why are you shouting? Why are you praying right now? וכיוון שהעניין הזה נכתב בתורה שנצחית, this is written in the Torah, that it is forever, It comes to teach us. על כל כך צריך לומר שיכולים עם איזו הוראה אפילו אחרי כמה וכמה דורות. Therefore we need to learn the message. What is the message that God has for us? ועד למעמד ומצב שמנו אלו כדי לקמן. And especially today. So let's see. כאשר אומרים ליהודים, when we say to Jews, כפי שנהג הרבי בא ללילה, this previous Shabbos, was the yard site of the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, שהיה קורא לאברכים ואומר להם, in Russia, the previous Lubavitch Rebbe used to call um, Hasidim, young Bacharim, 22, 18, 19, 24, you know, people who are geniuses in Torah, he used to call them over, and he used to tell them, this is in Russia, עד עכשיו ישבתם על התורה ועל העבודה, I used to tell them until now, you study Torah, בעיר שיש בה יהודים שומרי תורה ומצוות, in a city that there's Jews in a religious environment. That's it, that's where you live the entire life. ישיבות, there's ישיבות, there's שולס. מבלי לידע מכל עניינים של ניסיונות והעלמות והסתרים, without knowing how it is to live in a place with no kosher food, There's no mikve, there's no education for your kids. אבל עכשיו, but now, צריך כל אחד ליטול את תרמילו על שכמו, each one next to take his bag on his shoulder, ולנסוע למקום שעדיין אין בו לא תורה ולא מצוות. To go to a place that there's no Torah and no mitzvahs. And it's not like in America, where you go to a place there's no Torah and no mitzvahs, and you can speak about Torah and mitzvahs, and nothing happens. In Russia, when you spoke about Torah and mitzvahs, you know what happened? You were put to death. People were killed, left and right. But he used to tell his students, you have to go over there and to make sure to spread Judaism over there. And you have to start with the lowest one. You cannot start giving him, you know, Gemora and uh, high uh, Hasidus and Kabbalah. You can't start teaching that. You have to start with the Aleph base. Kepshuto, Aleph base shel Yadut. You have to talk about kosher, about mikveh, about things like this. Aleph base shel Masa Mitzvot. Kashrut, Tarat HaMishpacha, Shmirat Shabbat. As I toen, so the person, he says, might ask you, the student, יש לו אפשרות להיות שקור בתפילה. He says, but what are you talking about? I have an opportunity over here where I, I'm in New York or wherever I am in a, pla- in a place of holiness in yeshiva, I have an opportunity to connect to God, to pray to God. שקור בתפילה ולימוד במשך כל היום כולו, in, 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 throughout the whole day. שאז דבר בטוח הוא שכל מה שלומד הרי זה תורתו של הקדוש ברוך הוא. Then I know for sure everything I learn, this is God's. וכאשר מתפלל כל אחד לפי מעמדו ומצבו, בין אם יש לו כוונה עמוקה בתפילה או רק פירוש של מילות כפשוטו, and then when I pray, according to my abilities, it doesn't matter if it's low or high, הרי בוודאי נעשה את זה איזה שינוי בשביל התפילה. For sure something is going to change by me. Maybe a little, maybe a lot, but for sure. ואם כן, למה לא לחפש עניינים של עושר? לנסוע למקום מנוכר, so why do I have to go to go away, the students say, to a far away place, 
בשעה שאין יודעים הוא יצליח שם עם לאו. Without, I don't even know if I'm going to succeed over there or not. I might go to a town, I might be there 20 years. So far, my kids don't have the right education. My wife doesn't have kosher food. Nothing is happening. And who knows, maybe I'm going to influence somebody and maybe I'm not going to influence somebody. But if I stay over here and I pray and I learn and I learn do things, for sure I'm going to influence me and my wife and my children. So what kind of logic is it for me to go somewhere else that maybe I'll succeed? It's im ishma'u elav, im lav. I don't know if they're going to listen to me, if not. And also over there, it's not a religious life. It's very hard to keep being religious in a faraway place. And the Rebbe says, ואפל פי כן, and nevertheless, תובעים ממנו שיפסיק בתפילתו לקונו, we see that God tells him, that the Friedeke Rebbe tells him, that you have to stop doing what you're doing, praying, learning Torah. Stop learning Torah, this is what God says. And do what? ויעסוק בעשייה גשמית, זה כמו יהודים, it says, make sure that Jews around a place where they don't have Judaism, go specifically over there and make sure the Jews become closer to Judaism. And this is what it's written in the Torah. You should know. There was once a Jew, his name was Moshe Rabbeinu. That the truth, he was an angel. He was half an angel. He wasn't even a man, like us. וכמו שכתב הרמב״ם בביאור ההפרש בין נבואת משה לשאר כל נביאים, just like we explained before, there's a big difference between the prophecy of Moshe and all other prophets. All other prophets, when they talk to God, all other prophets, it was including Abraham, including Yitzchak, including Yaakov, we're talking all other prophets, usually it was in a dream. It was at night. When they were sleeping. Yeah? And even if it wasn't in a dream, those who wanted in a dream, they, was, they, used to, it, they used to go into a seizure, prophets, pretty much. It was like almost a seizure. They would lose control over, the, over their body completely, and then God would talk to them. Moshe was the only one who talked to God like I talk to you right now. Yeah, the same way. They had a conversation, like two, like two human beings. Zoom. Yeah? It wasn't even Zoom, it was right here. It was not even Zoom, better than Zoom. Umoshe Rabbeinu haya omed mitpalel lakadosh baruchu, lo bishvil atzmo, and then at, at the occurrence that we're talking about it, Moshe Rabbeinu was standing and praying for whom? Not for himself, like I said, not for Alexis, ela bishib ne Yisrael. He was talking to God, why? To save the Jewish people. That's what he was talking to God. Nevertheless, God tells him what? Nights on the time. What? He, he, all he should have done, he says, raise your stuff. He shouldn't have told him. The reason why he told him, Mati Tzakla, he was teaching him a lesson. He says, you're doing something wrong, Moshe. That's... That's the point of the thing. It's, it's going to become more understood. We're going to answer your question soon, by the way. On the second part, we're going to ask, we're going to deal exactly with the question I think you, you meant to ask. If we don't, ask the question in the end. God is not telling to him, okay, besides davening, you should also do something. No. He's telling him, why are you davening? You're doing something wrong. That's what God tells him. It's not like you should do both. It says you shouldn't be praying. That's what God is saying to him. And like the Rabbi Rashab says, and the idea behind it now is going to become revealed to us. <laughs> um, who, who goes to the gym over here? One person goes to the gym. Who, who tried to lift the, a very heavy object once in his life? Everybody did, right? When you lift a very object, a very heavy object, right? Do you, can you think about, um, I don't know, can you think about the news? 
Why not? What does the muscle have to do with your brain somewhere else? This is a muscle. What? The mind has to overcome the body. It's not holding us together. That's the whole mind. Why? 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 If this is muscles, this is mind. Yeah. It doesn't work this way. If you want to lift an heavy object, you need to be well everywhere though. You, need, you cannot think about something else. It's impossible. A person who is about to live in an heavy object has to be well in focus in the heavy object. God is telling Moshe, you have a physical problem? Don't become spiritual right now. It's a physical problem, right? That's what you have. You know what you have to be right now? Focus, focus where? Oh, you have to go. For, this is not the time for prayer. You need all your energy into what? Into the problem. You can. That's only if you know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you say, God, help me. We'll, 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 we'll talk. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll keep coming. Again, ask, ask the question in the end of the sale because we might address it. We might address your question. Okay? The Kevan Shaken, Harei. So it's like this. If he's going to continue being in the in the in the in the spiritual realm, asking God for instructions, and at the same time he's going to also instruct the Jewish people how to escape the Egyptians. Then the inst- his involvement in the, Physically saving the Jewish people will not be with all his power. In other words, God is telling him, right now, you need your entire being into the physical world, not into the prayer world. When it's a time that you need to save a Jew, and by the way, this is a sin that we do all the time. It's a time that we need to say we do. Christians love to say it. I'll pray for you. What, what do you mean you pray for me? <laughs> well, what does it mean? I need money. How, how is your prayer going to help? Somebody is sick. And you can help him. If, you, if you're a doctor, let's say. Right? You don't say, I'll pray for you. Or somebody is, uh, is he needs money to eat. He doesn't have enough food. You don't tell him, I'll pray for you. What do you do? You give him some food. (laughs) It's not the time to go praying for somebody. (laughs) Yeah? This is what God is teaching us over here. And how much, you would think, maybe we should do both. Maybe I should also pray and give. God says no. Because if you really want to help him, you have to be well in thinking about how to make sure that this guy is eating. Not at praying to God that you should eat. Afterwards, at night, you can eat. Not during the trouble. I mean, after that night, you can pray. Not during when it's happening. When it's happening, that's not time for prayer. When it's happening, what, what you should you do? Action. Take Israel now. We are here. We have no choice. When you but see somebody drowning, and you are jumping, you say, God, help me. It takes a number second because it's I don't like it what you're doing. Because we have been upon your mom for life. That's 24 7. And it should reduce my jumping. God help me save. That me. millisecond caused him to drown. <laughs> Thank you. Because of you wanted to be spiritual, and then the poor guy is dead. You gave a great example. That, that exactly is the example. And you know why? Since you're busy in... Yeah, uh, and yeah, since... Yeah, and yeah, also... Yeah, <laughs> and even, even, even that, you're not fully into... If you, if in, even in the air. It's in the air you, you're making the prayer. You're not fully in there with all your power in order to lift him up. And you won't be able to lift him up. We'll get there. We don't know yet. We're not yet there. We'll, we'll get to that in a zero. Lo zo bilvad shemutar lafsik bitz. Ve lachen kasher magim izman shetchim latzil yudi. When we need to save a Jew, 
אזי גוברת חשיבות הצלתו של יהודי, אף על פי שלעת עתה הוא עובד עבודה זרה. Even if a Jew is until now an idol worshiper. עד כדי כך שבשביל הצלתו לא זו בלבד שמותר להפסיק בתפילה. Not only are you allowed to stop davening for such a Jew, אלא עוד זה שיש לו ציווי. There's a commandment by God. Don't waste time praying right now. Save him. God save. Now it's not a time for prayer. ועל יסוד הוראה זו ראינו אופן הגעת הנשיאים. And now, that was the first part. And we're going to see, it's going to become much deeper than this. This is, was only an introduction to the subject. Yeah, it was only an introduction to the subject. It's going to get much deeper. Okay, let's see the second part. This is the war with Amalek. We're on page number six, and we're going to have an almost similar story. And we'll need to understand what's going on over here again. But it's on a deeper level over here what's happening. Let's see what. Vayavo Amalek vayilachem im Yisrael berefidim. Amalek came and he fought against the Jewish people in a place called Refidim. Refidim is acronym for Refei Yadayim. By the way, if you want to know. Hands are weak. It was the place where the hands of Moshe became weak. That's why it's called Refidim. ויאמר משה ליהושע, it says what happened when it war in Amalek, משה said to יהושע, בחר לנו אנשים וצא לכם בעמלק, it says choose for us people and go fight with Amalek. מחר אנוכי ניצב על ראש הגבעה, tomorrow I'm going to go up on the hill, ומטה האלוקים בידי with the staff of God, ויעש יהושע כאשר אמר לו משה, יהושע did exactly what משה told him, להילחם בעמלק, he went to fight against Amalek, ומשה, אהרון וחור, משה, אהרון, and Miriam's son, his nephew, עלו ראש הגבעה. They went up to the top of the hill. והיה כאשר ירים משה ידו, when משה lifted up his hands, this is what happens, וגבר ישראל, the Jewish people won. וכאשר יניח ידו וגבר עמלק, but he wasn't strong enough, and his hands fell down, עמלק. One, the sun. And then it says, look, look at what it says. Ve'idei Moshe kvedim. And the hands of Moshe became heavy. And, uh, we, we have example when he was 120 that he did much better. When he was 120. Ve'ikhu even, and they took a stone, so he couldn't stand. He couldn't, so he couldn't lift his hands. So what did they do? They took a stone, ויקחו אבן וישימו תחתיו, they put it underneath him, וישב עליה, and he sat on the stone, ואהרון וחור תמכו בידיו מזה אחד ומזה אחד. אהרון was standing on the sides, holding his hands up, because his hands was falling. This is Moshe, the strong Moshe. ויהי ידיו את בונת בו השמש. And then, they won the war. ויחלוש יהושע את עמלק ואת עמו לכי חרב. And יהושע won the war because of that. And we're going to again, something doesn't make a sense in the story. Let's see what. Lechura lo muvan. Again, it's understood. Moshe Rabbeinu is the one, Shotzienu mi Mitzrayim, he's the one who took us out of Egypt, Kara lanu tayam, he split the sea, Horid lanu taman, he took down the mound for us. Im kol shar ha-ma'alot shomrim on Moshe, with all the other things that we say about Moshe, Ech yitachen shekavdu yadav? How is it possible that his hands are born? If a mother sees her baby, is in danger, what, she cannot go like this? She can go like this for three days. And Moshe, with the Jewish people, cannot hold his hands up? What are you telling me? He became, all, all of a sudden he became old? What's going on over here? Yetera mezo, furthermore, Bekriyat yam suf, kshegia azman, larem et matcha venate et chalayayim, when it came to um, splitting of the sea, it was, it took, Many hours, this whole procedure. Look of do your dove. Over there, his hands did not become heavy. And a few weeks later, oh, now his hands becoming heavy? As madua piton kan kav do your dove, why all of a sudden over here, his hands are becoming heavy? And let's look, it is exactly for the same problem as before. Lachen must be Rashi, so Rashi asked this question. Rashi doesn't understand. Rashi says, I don't understand. In splitting of the Red Sea, 
He didn't be, his hands did not become heavy. And later on, also, we know that when he was 120, Moshe did feats of strength. Moshe put up the Mishkan by himself. You know, the entire tabernacle he erected by himself. And you want to tell me over here that his hands are heavy? What's going on over here? So Rashi explains to us on page number seven at the top, Shezeaya Onesh, he was punished. Now we need to understand a couple of things. Who are you punishing? Moshe or the Jewish people? Because you remember, when Moshe's hands become heavy, what's happening? The Jewish people are losing the war. So we need to understand that. לכן מספיק רשי, שזה היה עונש על כך שהוא מינה מישהו אחר לנהל את המלחמה. You know what he was punished for? Because he nominated Yoshu to run the show, to run the war. That's why he was punished. In other words, he should have ran. He should have did the war. ולא עשה את זה בעצמו. That he didn't do it by himself. And look at the language that Rashi says, something that doesn't, that doesn't make sense at all. Rashi talks in such a harsh language on Moshe that you're thinking to yourself, Rashi, how dare you? How dare you speak like this about a tzaddik like Moshe? And look what Rashi says. Beshvil shenit atzel b'mitzvah. Rashi says he was lazy in the commandment. He was lazy. That's the language that Rashi uses. He was lazy in the commandment. And what did he do? Umina achal tachtav. He decided, you know what? You do the job for me. That's why Rashi says, measure for measure, his hands became heavy. God punished him. Now you need, we need to understand what's going on with Moshe. What is he thinking? Obviously, I said we're going to deal, we all have to deal with that also, with that question also, right? וצריך להבין, we need to understand. מפורש בכתובים, so it says, let's go back to try to understand this whole story. What is going on over the story? It says, אנוכי ניצב על ראש הפסגה, על ראש הגבעה, it says, Moshe says, I'm going to go up on the hill, ויהי ידיו אמונה, and my hands are going to be אמונה, strong to God. פרוסות השמיים בתפילה, they're going to be elevated to heavens in davening, in prayer. היינו, שאין פירוש הדברים שמשה רבנו נמנע משתי מלחמת המלך. It's not that Moshe wasn't fighting the war. Of course Moshe was fighting the war. Moshe was fighting the spiritual war, up there in heaven, and Yeshua sure was fighting the physical war, up there, up, up over here. It's not like Moshe took off, you know, he went to, uh, I don't know, to Costa Rica during the war so that he can be on the beach. He was fighting his war. Somebody needed to fight over there. Who was about to, who, was, who needed, who's going to fight? Yeah, the spiritual matters that needed to be taken care of. And Moshe was the one to do it. Ela shechilku b'milchama haya al dey but his portion, he says, I'm going to choose the spiritual war and not the physical war. Again, like when? Like in the previous story. In the previous story, he had two choices. He could have gone the spiritual way that he did and not the physical way. Okay? And the Zohar explains to us, Moshe, it wasn't like he was completely off. שמשה רבנו התאמץ במלחמת עמלק למעלה. It says that Moshe was fighting against the angel of Amalek up there in heaven. באותו מידה שיהושע התאמץ במלחמת עמלק למטה. In the same aspect that יהושע was trying to do it down here. וכיוון שמלחמה למעלה היה משה יכול להצליח יותר מיהושע. And the Lord tells you, it makes sense. If you're fighting wars in heaven, who's the best fighter? Moshe is the best fighter. He should be up in heaven. He should be going up in heaven. Who's better than him? No one is better than him. It would be irresponsible for him to stay, stay here and to send Yeshua up there. Yeshua is not as good as him in the spiritual wars. So what do we want from the poor guy? Again, the same question. Why are we punishing Moshe? שמנה אחר תחתיו, that he told Yoshua to stay here, Yoshua was better for the job down here, and Moshe was better for the job up there. And over there, now you're getting punished now. Not nice. 
Everybody understand the question? Continue. Let's see this whole thing in the Zohar. Source number three. Vayomer Yoshua, Vayomer Moshe el Yoshua, and Moshe said to Yoshua, Bechala no anashim betzei lachem b'amalek. It says, choose to us men, go fight against the Malek. Why did Moshe separate himself from the first fight that the Jewish people ever experienced? Moshe knew what the problem is. It was a spiritual problem. Amal Moshe, Moshe said, I'm going to fight the spiritual battle that is up there in heaven. And you, Yoshua, are more fitting to fight the physical war down here. Makes sense. Right? Rashi is talking about punishments and this and that. Why, why, why are we saying all these things? And it says, When it says, when he lift, that Moshe lifted up his hands, the Jewish people won. Which Jewish people? Israel, which Israel? Says Israel in heaven one. Israel shelemala. Ve'lachen silek Moshe tatzmo ma'akav shelemata. And this is the Zohar says because he was the best fighter in the heavens, he designated himself for the heavens. Kedeli is the vet be'akav shelemala v'yitzchon yado. Says not only that it will be criminal if he would have done anything else. That's what the Zohar says. But Rashi, what does Rashi say? That's why he was punished. We need to understand what's, what's going on over here. So let's continue. Page 8. But the thing is, when you find yourself in a situation where Jewish people are getting injured, for example, Amalek comes, comes a dog and bites the Jewish people, Amalek comes and bites the Jewish people, then what is the first response? Oh, I'm sorry. What is the only response? Not the first response should be. Tzarich miyad lavo latzet velazor lebnei Israel al yede milchama beyadayim kepshuto. If they're fighting against Jewish people in a spiritual world, absolutely go to the spiritual world and fight against them. But over here we're not talking about the spiritual world. A spiritual war. We're talking about what, what happens. People are shooting at Jewish people. Think about Israel right now. If you're in Israel, not me, I'm too old, but if you're in Israel and you're 30 years old, you're 20 years old, and you pray, if there's a yeshiva bachel today in Israel, and instead, and he, he doesn't go to the army, he stays in yeshiva, that is called what? That's not only a sin, a big sin. That's not, now is not the time to stay in yeshiva. Now is not the time to pray. Now is the time to do what? To take a gun and go shoot somebody. That's the, that, that's the time now. It's not a time for prayer. It's not a time for studying Torah. This is what God tells me right over there. It says... That's what the Chabad people tell now, the yeshiva in Israel. Of course. Look, um, I'll, I'll tell you, practically, they don't take them. Those, there's many in Chabad who are already in the army. So those go to the army. But they don't, talk new, they talk, they don't take new recruits right now because they, they can't train anybody. They don't have the power. So practically, they, even, but they, that's not the only thing you can do. Go and pick potatoes. I don't care. You, 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 go and fix cars. You don't have to be on the front line. There's other things to help. That, but, but I'm saying, if, so if they need, if right now somebody is getting injured, what is, your, what is your job? Take a gun and do something about it. You don't pray, you don't study Gemara. Somebody who's old, old, old geezer like us, or somebody who's in America, who's not capable of fighting the war in Israel, and no yachol, now we, what should we do? Psalms. Yeah, we should pray, because we cannot help. But somebody who's there who can help, Especially Moshe, who's the leader. It's his responsibility to help. We have to pray, say Tehillim, so that they can win the war. But 
But anybody who can take a gun and fight, Allah lazet vi lachem beadav. He has an obligation to go and fight the war with his hands. So Netanyahu is too old to fight. No, Netanyahu is not too old. He doesn't need a gun. He's, he's, he, he, he's fighting with strategies. He's fighting with his own things, yeah? Now it's not time to learn Gomorrah. Now it's not time to learn Tehilim, to say Tehilim. For us, maybe. Not for a 20-year-old kid in, a, in yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael. And then he tells you, you know what? This is the message God tells Moshe. There's a time of war, and you praying, you nominated somebody else underneath. See, Moshe is capable of attacking a war. Just like Yeshua was capable, Moshe was also capable. It says, that's why his hands became heavy. Still it's not understood though. We're going to make it more difficult. There's still a question. It says, but how did Moshe, how, this is the first time it's happening. How should Moshe have known? After this, okay, now he knows. But why it says he was punished? See, it says he was punished for it. How should he have known that now is the time to fight physically? God didn't tell him. God left it to him to strategize the war. And the explanation is, you wrong. He did tell him. Where did he tell him? In the splitting of the sea, he told him. That's right. That's right. He already taught him the lesson. And that's why he's getting punished over here. Because the lesson he told him when? When he says, Mati tzakela. You remember in the beginning, he says, why are you shouting to me? That's, that's not the time. He already taught him that lesson. Moshe didn't learn. Yeah? He, he said to him already, I already told you, Mati tzakela. I already explained to you before that at a time of war, you take action. And now you're again praying? And now you go again spiritual realms? Uh-huh. Yeah. In the splitting of the Red Sea, that was before the war with Amalek, God already talked to Moshe, why are you shouting at me? Speak to the Jewish people, they should travel. Rashi over there explains, God already told him the rule. What's the rule? Now is not time for prayer. What do you mean, why not? Because now Israel is in physical danger. When Israel is in physical danger, it's time to do what? To help them physically. Israel netunim betzara, when the Jewish people are physically in danger, and you're standing to daven? Even you, Moshe with davening, the highest davening possible. It's not the time. You need to use your legs. Run away. This is why. Also with the war of Amalek, Moshe Rabbeinu needed to go by himself and not nominate Yehoshua to do the work for him. He used, he used So now we're going to understand another thing. We're going to address the issue why it says that God punishes measure for measure. So we need to understand the punishment of God to Moshe, and we're going to see bringing all, all these details together now. The Alpiza Yuvan, now we're going to understand the punishment that Moshe was given. His hands became heavy. This is the question. In Yana Onesh, Tzichiot Bofen Shen Minda Keneged Mida, punishment has to be heavy, measure for measure. Um, but it don't be done in our case. Kevan Shata Naita, as they shall know, Hinit Savlit Palel of Ne Israel, yeah, since that he was standing to pray for the Jewish people, Madone Nash Beadav, Vede Moshe Kvedim, why did God punish him with his hands? And the hands of Moshe are heavy. He should have punished him with his mouth. He was praying. Umagam, and furthermore, your question, 
שהעניין של ידי משה כבדים, the fact that the hands of משה were heavy, היה יכול להזיק את בני ישראל. Because of course the disaster. Jewish people could have died because of that. שהרי כאשר ירי משה ידיו וגבר ישראל, כשניח ידיו וגבר עמלק. Because every time it was too heavy, who won the war? עמלק. You're killing Jews. This is how you punish משה? By killing Jews, God? What are you doing? ואם כן, למה נענש בעניין שיכול להזיק לבני ישראל? Why what is the punishment was in such a way that he could have caused the death of Jewish people? ולא בעניין שנוגע אליו בלבד. And not in something that only have to do with משה. He should have only punished משה. Not something that could have caused the death of a Jew. אך העניין הוא... But now we're going, it's going to make sense. שכיוון שהיה לו להשתתף עם כל בני ישראל ידי מלחמה בידיים, what was the problem? He should have used his hand to fight the war. What did he do? Instead of using his hands to fight the war, instead of picking up a sword and going out to fight against the Malek, what did he do? He started using his mouth. So God says, ah, you don't need your hands? So your hands are going to become, you are prayer, for prayer do you need hands? No, you don't need for prayer hands. I'm going to make your hands heavy to symbolize the fact that your hands are weak. Your hands are weak from the mitzvah. You don't have the mitzvah of using your hands. That's the symbolism. Very good, very good, very good. By the way, I don't want to bring it, it's another class. Do you, you remember the, in, the way that Moshe passed away was because he hit the rock? Over there, it's exactly the opposite. God told him to be spiritual to the rock, to speak to it, and he hit him. I don't want it connected over here, it's a whole new class. Yeah? But just that you know that everything connects. You can see these whole messages back and forth The entire things are connecting. לכן נענש במידה כנגד מידה שידי משה כבדים נתייקרו ידיו. This is why his hands became heavy. Um, the last part we're not going to do. Rashi says he should have done the, 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 the because it did Rashel מלעשות המצווה. He didn't do the commandment of picking up arms. Yes. Sometimes I found in a difficult situation, or I have to do something that's difficult, I will say, Hashem, give me strength. But what you're telling me is that's not appropriate. No, sometimes it is appropriate. Okay. I'll, give, I, I, I'll give you when it's appropriate. When the trouble is right here, right now, you have to take immediate action. You have to take immediate action. Okay. So for the time, there's war in Israel, what are you supposed to do? Take action. Take action. If you have time, if you cannot take action right now, obviously pray. The first response is, Take action. After what you have, you have time, you can pray. And if your first response is you pray to God, that's a sin. When a Jew is getting hurt, your first response is all of yourself making sure he doesn't get hurt. Not praying to God. It's your responsibility. Well, in Psalm 1484, the And the red they need. And the nest, the Palmach showed that. So it's a counterexample because if Joshua was a better fighter, you know, like with Goliath, David was a better guy with the slinger than show. So you take the best you have. So I, I don't think, I think you, you missed the point of, of the. We're not saying you should not pray. For sure you should pray, but not at the time that you need it. If somebody is drowning, somebody is, somebody is drowning, you do not take time to pray. There's fire and somebody, you need to jump into the house and, and grab a woman out or a child out of the fire. Don't pray to God. Go and grab the kid and take him out. Then you take a selfie first. <laughs> <laughs> That's another problem. <laughs> you know, le, 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 I'll, 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 tell you, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. It uh, happened many years ago. 
I don't even think you know the people that we're talking about. I don't think anybody of you, maybe, no, I don't even think that you remember him. Yeah? So I can tell, I can tell, I'm not going to use names so nobody knows, but I'll tell you, so, um, it is known that in Chabad shuls, people talk. You know, it's one of the shuls that if we see people talk, we let them talk. You know? And in other shuls, usually sure. doing services, yeah, yeah. I'm, t- I'm talking about this. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for bringing it over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in other shoes, people are very, very shh, shh, shh. Nobody's allowed to talk ever doing services and so on and so forth. So the reason is because of the Baal Shem Tov. There's a story at the time of the Baal Shem Tov that there was a shul who the Rav comes to shul and everybody used to talk in shul. And one day the Rav says, no, this is too much. We come here to pray to God, to connect to God, and everybody's busy talking. No more talking, right? No more talking. So if two, three weeks go around, and he found that there's a, he finds out that one of the congregants um, lost his house, lost his job, doesn't have enough money to feed his family. So he comes to the other congregants and he tells them, guys, you know what, what's going on? How come nobody told me anything about the guy? You know, you just let your, a friend of yours that comes to shul and prays with you go like this. So they told him, but Rabbi, you told us not to talk. You see, until three weeks ago, what would we say? We used to chat. And then we used to hear, this guy is looking for a job over here. This guy is looking for a job over there. We used to hear things. Now, because you told us not to talk. So this is what happens. So he, the, Val Shem Tov, the Rabbi says, okay, I take my words back. Guys, talk. There was a case over here in town. I had this conversation, but I just told you this story. I told someone once, and he, he wasn't someone who, got, who used to come to my shul, to this shul. He used to come to another shul where it was quiet. And he told me, Rabbi, I want to tell you, in our shul happened exactly what you're saying. So I said, what? Well, there was a, a gentleman over there, a young man, was in the 30s, and he used to come every Shabbos. And then he didn't come for like two, three weeks to shul. And I asked around what happened to him. And it happened to be that he overdosed. He overdosed. And it says, and Rabbi, I knew about it. He died? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it says, what, what do you mean you knew about it? So it says, because for like one week or two weeks, before the, the, the last two weeks that he did come to shul, I shook his hands and they were all sweaty and so. Uh, and I saw that he's not, he was probably taking uh, drugs at the time. And I saw that he was, you know, something was wrong with, was wrong with the person. And I wanted, you know, to say something, but there was no opportunity to talk. You know, that's what he says. There was no, he just didn't, he didn't come up. So in a situation where somebody is, again, <laughs> look what the shul, in, in other words, what's the purpose of the shul, if you think about it? To connect to God or to save the Jew? What's more important? The prayer of the shul is more important or the connection to God? At that moment that he felt something was wrong, he should have ran around find what's going on, talk to the guy, maybe um, talk to some doctors in shul, and there were doctors in shul that could have taken care of the situation, and so on and so forth. This is what we're talking about. It's not something, you know, that only happens to Moshe Rabbeinu. It happens to us every day in our daily life. We have to bring it into our life. If you don't socialize, you can't support each other. That's right. So a little bit of talking. I don't say one should start... This is not a message for everybody to stop praying and only talking shul, obviously. <laughs> we should come to shul and, and pray. But once in a while, people talk to the end of the world. So if you see somebody that looks like they're struggling or suffering, do don't you pray for him. Do you not your own business or do you... Uh... Don't pray for him. No, Help him. <laughs> <laughs> You, you try to do it. Do if the guy shuts you off, he shuts you off. Okay. Look, between you and me, it depends on the amount of love you have for the guy. I 
It's, that's the truth. That's if you really loved him, yeah. you wouldn't mind the fact that he would be angry at you that you intervened. That's right. <laughs> it says, why do we say, it says, why should I put myself into here? He's going to shout at me. He's going to say, mind your own business. I don't want it. If it was our son, we would do it, obviously, because we love our son. We don't mind if he shouts at us. This guy, I don't love him so much. I don't want the, this hassle. That's the truth. So yes, if you, if, if you think you can help this situation, you should always try. If you, th if you know that just by talking to him, it might even make it even worse, of course, don't do it. So you have to tactfully do it in a way that's not going to insult the person. That's right, that's right. Person. Obviously. Oh, we had the debate, so I want to get your opinion. If somebody read the Torah, mm -hmm. he makes a mistake. And people yell, yeah. this is the right way. And I could see the guy's face. Yeah. He was clearly rebuked yeah. badly. Yeah. Because that's where the Kabbalim should whisper quietly or whatever. But then people say, oh, I know how to do it because I have all the Nikuzot. And he reads the Torah and makes a mistake. Uh, God would forgive you making a mistake. I'll tell you a story about that's this. Bad because I'm insulting a guy the day he badly is a higher than you made a mistake that God knows. Most people don't care or don't know. In this week's parsha, it's actually if you don't read the Torah, yeah, if you don't read the if you're not a Balkere, you don't notice it, but it's very, very, very hard. Why is it very hard? Because there's a lot of paro. Paro, sometimes par it's paro, and sometimes it's faro. Sometimes it's a pay and sometimes it's a fee. And if you don't know dick duck like most guys, it's very difficult. To know when it's power or when it's power, you have to remember. So there is the, there's one guy comes to shul, he's the balkere, and every time it's a paro, he says paro, and the entire congregation says faro. So he has to change that. Every time he says faro, everybody says no paro. So faro paro faro paro 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 faro back and forth back and forth. He means the congregation, the entire reading, until he can't take it anymore. And he tells the congregation, guys, stop it. What's the difference? Paro or faro? It's the same thing. You don't correct. Paro or faro is the same thing. Leave me alone. So they ask him, what's your name? So he said, my name is Fisher. He says, my name is Fisher. Fisher, Fisher, same thing. <laughs> what's the difference? 